A short squeeze can make you a fortune or destroy your life. They used to only be carried out by fat cats on Wall Street, but the tables have turned. Anyone can attempt the squeeze these days, and there's a few potential squeezes building as we speak. And don't get me wrong, it's risky, but it's insanely exciting. I mean, I wouldn't mind my net worth just getting shot into the stratosphere. People have predicted giant short squeezes on everything from big stocks to cryptocurrencies and commodities, and some work out really well, like almost too well. Others, not so much. But recently, I've been getting a ton of questions about whether a particular asset will squeeze, and I felt the need to dive in. But before we get carried away and decide whether you could mastermind a short squeeze, we need to see what a short squeeze actually is, like internally. Right, so there's an asset. Let's use M&Ms for this example. Imagine each M&M, this thing, costs $100. I know with inflation, that's actually not that hard to picture. But that's neither here nor there. Some people think that these chocolates are going to crash in value. Maybe they think management is doing a poor job, or maybe they're sick of Miss Green getting shamed and stripped of her individuality. Either way, they're short these candies. They did this by borrowing someone else's M&Ms at the current price of $100 each. Let's say they borrowed 10 for $1,000 total. The shorts would immediately sell 10 M&Ms for $1,000, and they do this because they think the price will drop and they can buy them back cheaper in the future, netting a profit on the difference in price. So let's say the price drops to $50 and the shorts buy back in. This is an excellent deal for them because the price cut in half. They only have to pay $500 dollars to get the same 10 M&Ms back, meaning they can give back what they originally borrowed and get $500 in profit. Not bad for some delicious chocolate. But what if the price doesn't go down? Instead, it unexpectedly climbs to $150 per M&M. Now it's gonna cost $1,500 to buy back those 10 that they borrowed for $1,000. A $500 loss instead of a profit, devastating. Thanks to these guys, you just learned how short selling works. Shorting can be done with stocks, commodities, and kind of anything. You could short an entire country if you wanted to. All you have to do is borrow shares of that country's ETF, sell them, and hope for a total economic collapse for your own personal gain. The world pays us a hefty ransom. Now, what is a short squeeze? If we were a textbook, we'd say something like, a short squeeze is a large spike in an asset's price that happens when a huge number of short sellers are forced to buy back in at a loss, making the price shoot higher and higher. Let's go back to the M&Ms. So I have 40 M&Ms here, which is the whole market. What if only two of them were shorted? No big deal. Five, eh, 20. Well, now we're starting to see an unusually high percentage of the M&M market being shorted. It's ripe for a short squeeze. See, if the price goes up too high, the people left holding those 20 short positions are in serious trouble. Short sellers will try to minimize their losses, so they'll rush out and buy M&Ms on the market so they can then give them back to their lender without losing too much money, close the position, and get out to lower risk. The thing is, all that buying to close positions pushes up the price more and more, and that's where things get interesting. The people who hold short positions are panicking, losing money by the second. However, those who made a regular investment into M&Ms are seeing their net worth climb and climb. They're on top of the world. Different sides of the same chocolate winners and losers. Short squeezes entered mainstream investment lingo just a couple years ago. GameStop, Tesla, AMC. However, they've been around a lot longer than that. They've just never been as accessible as they are today. And I'm gonna give you a couple new examples in a minute, but I wanna highlight something. The power is now with the people. It's just a question of understanding how to use that power. Ordinary investors can now carry out complex financial strategies like this fella named Mike. He was just a guy who dabbled in stocks, winning on some and probably losing on more. But he saw his chance to finally make a fortune on GameStop. 90% of GameStop's stock was shorted. In M&M terms, that's like, almost all the M&Ms. It made no sense. It looked like far too many people were banking on GameStop just going bust. Sure, you know, the chain was in trouble, the retail market had changed, and their model was looking a bit outdated. But our buddy Mike here, he didn't think it was terminal. In fact, he thought all of these shorts were just flat out wrong. But despite that, more and more shorts just piled on over time. Soon 110% of the stock was shorted, then 140%. Can you even have 140% of a stock shorted? It turns out, yes. Short sellers were borrowing GameStop stock and selling it to other people who were also short sellers. So they did the same thing. And so did the people they sold it to. An endless, senseless cycle of shorting. Shorts on top of shorts. And the whole thing was a tower ready to collapse. It was the chance of a lifetime to get in on a true short squeeze. Mike bought 1,000 call option contracts every single week in anticipation of this event. But despite all the data, the price just didn't rise yet. 
He had to let the contracts expire without using them. He was losing money. But the math just didn't make sense. This thing has to collapse at some point. He even tried to convince everyone he knew to buy the stock, and it still didn't budge until suddenly news of a possible short squeeze exploded online. Regular folks started catching on, largely thanks to this guy who goes by Roaring Kitty online. The squeeze couldn't have been marketed better. Not only was it a way to make some dough, it was a way to effectively punch Wall Street in the nose at the same time. Once demand finally popped, we saw the mother of all short squeezes. The price went nuts. Beautiful chaos for the winners. Endless pain for the losers. So how do you get in on the next thing like that? Luckily, there's a few major ideas floating around right now. Now picture this. Times have been tough lately. Inflation is sky high and wages, they just aren't keeping up. There's a pandemic, collapsing markets. Everything is just terrible. I know, it hardly takes having hyperfantasia to picture that. And yes, I just learned that word, hyperfantasia. It's someone who can produce insanely vivid images in their head. But back to the pandemic. Everything sucks. You stumble across the story of the GameStop short squeeze. These ordinary people stuck it to the man and made money doing it. Now it's your turn. You look and look for the next big opportunity, and then it jumps out at you. Silver. Your mind drifts back to what you learned at school. This precious metal with the chemical symbol AG. And well, actually, that's about all you remember. But it doesn't matter, because you're, you're going to short squeeze that sucker, not carry out science experiments in the lab. And guess what? There's a Reddit plan already underway. And the idea is compelling. Here's the theory. Silver is massively shorted. Huge banks like JP Morgan have enormous short positions on silver, billions of ounces shorted. And it's massively undervalued. Also, there's far more paper silver on the market than actual metal. And at first, that sounds a lot like how someone from the 1600s would just Describe tinfoil, but what it really means is there are a lot of futures and options contracts where no physical silver is actually delivered. People are starting to get excited about this idea. It smells like GameStop 2.0, a wildly overshorted market that doesn't make sense to you. It's retail rebellion with the goal of rising the price from under $30 to over $100, $1,000, or who knows where. If we all buy just a little bit of silver, the price will shoot up, or at least that's what they say will happen. If it happens, banks with short positions would panic. The squeezers would make massive profits and stick it to the man yet again, making money while they're at it. It seems perfect, it can't fill, it won't fail, but it did. All this happened in 2021. The GameStop short squeeze was massive, but the silver squeeze failed for reasons that not everyone agreed on. There's an important lesson to be learned here. You could have all the evidence in the world for a squeeze, and it still might not happen. This is high risk territory. Even when it goes well, it takes a massive amount of patience, and it doesn't always go well. Now, some people think the whole silver thing was just a cynical pump and dump scheme. Others believe that there's no way of actually short squeezing silver, period. And there's still a group convinced that the price of silver is going to skyrocket and squeeze eventually. Others mock them. So who's right this time? In some ways, silver seems ripe for some kind of short squeeze. It's tempting, but we just can't be sure. We don't know. And maybe it's not as tempting as a certain cryptocurrency that I'm sure you've heard of, Bitcoin. I keep getting asked if this thing's gonna squeeze. You've probably had to remind yourself lately why you got into Bitcoin in the first place, because prices haven't been helping us out. It was a way of breaking the chains of the mainstream financial world. Sure, it's been a neat investment, but you're worried that those revolutionary ideas have kind of disappeared. The people buying Bitcoin were no longer people you identify with. Stock market traders, fund managers, wild speculators looking to move on to the next hot thing. And those people who are looking to make a quick buck have generally left the market at this point, sinking prices further and further. It sounds like maybe, just maybe this could be a short squeeze. So you do some research and it's looking pretty good. Now there's a lot of disagreement as to whether you can truly call a crypto short squeeze a short squeeze, but for the sake of simplicity, that's just what we're gonna call it in this video. And some people think that Bitcoin is actually well placed for a potential squeeze. It fits the profile. Prices are massively depressed, but there's still a lot of belief in the long-term price rising. And crucially, there's a ton of short positions. You just need a run of bearish activity and the short squeeze could kick in. There have been predictions on this for at least a few months. However, here's the important thing. It might not ever happen. But if it does, 
Bitcoin prices will move sharply and without hesitation, so you need to be paying attention to this. There was actually a brief short squeeze very recently, maybe even saw it and felt a tingle of excitement in your wallet. But it didn't turn into a full squeeze, not this time. So what should you keep an eye on for a potential Bitcoin short squeeze of the future? First and second are increased short positions and open interest on Bitcoin. These are strong indicators. Coinglass is a great site to use to monitor those data points. Third is positive sentiment, people thinking the price will go up. And fourth is a sudden uptick in price. Because remember, if there's a sudden increase, shorts may cover, which can lead to more shorts getting scared and covering as well, creating that vicious cycle of price increases that can lead to a short squeeze. It's possible for this kind of thing to happen, but it isn't the type of bet to place your house on. From here, I highly recommend checking out this video where the entire concept of crypto gets challenged. It's a must watch.